Hey folks, I'm Demotro. Welcome back to Combo Class, where today I want to tell you some cool things about the Golden Ratio, a number that some people say is hiding all over nature and paintings and architecture and history, and some of those occurrences of it are a bit exaggerated, but mathematically, this number is so fundamental that if anything, I would consider it underrated. Now this decimal would go on forever because this is an irrational number, but it does have an algebraic form, one plus the square root of five all over two, as well as many fundamental, simple ways we could define it, or simple questions we could ask that would lead us to that number. For example, if you wondered which ratio of two lengths we'll call the larger one A, and the shorter one, B, would fulfill the case where the larger divided by the smaller is the same as the whole divided by the larger. Well, that will be the case when the larger is the golden ratio times as long as the shorter. And that's just one of many simple questions someone could ask that would lead them to that number. In fact, when I was just 12, I asked a different question about numbers that led me to bump into this before I had ever heard of the golden ratio. So let me tell you a little story about when I was younger and how I bumped into this and how that relates to some other questions that could have led someone there in a whole web of patterns about this number. When I was 12, when I was in what's called seventh grade here, I was first getting interested in numbers. And I passed a test that made me skip the class called pre-algebra and go straight to algebra with the eighth graders. And although I understood most of the concepts I'd skipped, there were some terms and ideas that I had no idea about. And on one of the first days of that algebra class, they mentioned that this so-and-so set of data implies that there is a parabola. And I had no idea what a parabola was. I had heard of paradoxes, which had a similar seeming word root. And I was like, whoa, a paradox number thing? But as I learned more about what they meant, they were talking about the graph of y equals x squared. Later that week, when I was in my physical education class and was walking around this massive outdoor track where you just had to do a bunch of laps and you didn't really have to run to get enough laps in. So I had plenty of time walking around this big track thinking about various things and being the weirdo I am, that week I was thinking about x squared. I was wondering, if you square the number one, you get the same result as the input. It doesn't grow at all. And if you square the number two, your result is two larger than your input. Is there a number that if you square it is one larger than the original? And I figured maybe if there's an answer, it's between one and two, maybe one and a half. But when I multiplied one and a half by itself, I saw that the answer was two and a quarter, not quite one larger than the original. And later, when I went home and fiddled around on a calculator, trying to see which number multiplied by itself is one larger than itself, I found that it was somewhere around 1.618, but not exactly. I couldn't find an exact decimal number that had that property. And I gave up and forgot about it for years. Years later, I heard of the golden ratio, and when I saw those first few digits, I realized that's the number I'd been looking for back in the day. Although, when I was trying to calculate the next decimal place of it, I never would have properly calculated all of it. Due to its irrational nature, calculating a finite decimal representation of it is an impossible task. But really what I'd been asking was, which number x fulfills the property where x squared equals x plus 1. And that is a property that the golden ratio, as well as one other number, the negative version of its reciprocal, fits the answer to. Now, since some of these questions will have multiple answers like that, that do relate to powers of the golden ratio somehow, I'll note that the golden ratio isn't 
the answer to this, but is an answer to this. We can actually derive this from this original intuitive definition by saying that we noted that was called the golden ratio and that this part could be rewritten or simplified as one, which is the A over A, plus B over A, and that B over A is the flipped version of A over B, meaning it's the flipped version of the golden ratio. By flipped, we can make that happen with a reciprocal, one divided by the number, which is also the number to the negative first power. And so we can note that one divided by the golden ratio, which flips that part, plus one there, equals the golden ratio. And then if we multiply that by the golden ratio, we get the golden ratio squared equals the golden ratio plus one, which is the golden ratio times its reciprocal. Now, not only did we get that identity about the golden ratio, which we can also see in action that its square is one more than itself by looking at the decimal and it's two point that exact tail that was one point that tail before. We also got another identity for free along the way because we saw that the golden ratio equals one plus its reciprocal, which also could be called one plus its negative first power. And we can see that in action by noting that its reciprocal is zero point that exact same tail. Perhaps if back in the day, in that class, we'd been studying reciprocals instead of squares, I would have asked which number is one more than its reciprocal, and that also would have led me to the golden ratio. And if we wanted to include all of the integer powers of the golden ratio on the way here, we'd also want to note that its zeroth power is one, as expected. So really, all aspects of these identities here are powers of the golden ratio, some of them being the negative first power, some being the zeroth power, first power is in second power. Now the golden ratio cubed doesn't have that exact same decimal tail, but it does have a simple relationship to these earlier powers. The golden ratio cubed is exactly equal to the golden ratio squared plus the golden ratio. Another question someone could ask that would have led to the golden ratio is which number's cube is equal to its square plus itself? You might also start to see a pattern forming in these fun identities. To make it more obvious, let's add that these are the first power of the golden ratio. Turn the ones into golden ratio to the zeroth powers and turn this reciprocal into the golden ratio to the negative first power. Now we can see that in each of these cases, we have some power of the golden ratio equaling the two previous powers. And in general, it's true. The golden ratio to the power of n equals the golden ratio to one power before that, plus it to two powers before that. In a previous episode, when I showed how to construct numbers using a golden ratio number base, the reason that worked so well was because of this magical identity about powers of the golden ratio. And this identity may also look reminiscent to some of you of the rule that makes up another classic thing in math, the Fibonacci sequence the rule that defines the numbers in that sequence after the first two numbers being a zero and a one, or alternately a one then another one will get us to the same place, all further numbers are constructed by adding the element before and the element before that. Very similar to that identity. Now here in the Fibonacci sequence, 
when we add zero plus one is one, one plus one is two, one plus two is three, two plus three is five, and etc. Not only is the golden ratio inherently connected to the Fibonacci sequence in many ways, but it's connected to this recursion rule. Even if we made a Fibonacci-esque sequence that started with two different numbers and then used that rule for the rest of it. Let's define a Fibonacci-esque sequence, which some sources would call a generalized Fibonacci sequence, although that term's also used for other things. As a sequence that begins with two real numbers as our inputs, and you could label those the zeroth and first term or the first and second term. What's important is that you take two inputs and then create the rest of the sequence using this rule. Well, the powers of the golden ratio are a Fibonacci-esque sequence. That plus that equals that, that plus that is that, that plus that is that, that plus that is the fourth power, and etc. Not only are the powers of the golden ratio a Fibonacci-esque sequence, but the golden ratio is hiding inside any Fibonacci-esque sequence. And to see how, let's create our own sequence, starting from two randomish numbers. We'll create one by rolling a die. That gives us a two. And we'll create one with this thing. That gives us a 56. Now, we're gonna take two and 56 as our first two numbers, add those two to 58, add those two to 114, and continue to add each two into the next one. And that should be good for now. That should be long enough for the pattern to have emerged. What we're gonna see is how fast this sequence is growing. From one term to the next, how many times bigger did it get? And to find that, we can divide this latest term by the previous one. 21,578 divided by, what was it? was one, a bunch of threes, and a six. And that gives us 1.618026-ish, shockingly close to the golden ratio. And it's true that in any Fibonacci-esque sequence, with any two real numbers beginning it and then following that rule, with a few very specific exceptions of starting number cases that would prevent this that I'll flash on the screen, apart from those little exceptions, any two real numbers you want, you could start a sequence with, and if it follows that rule, its rate of growth is going to fluctuate closer and closer to the golden ratio. So the golden ratio is lurking inside any Fibonacci-esque sequence, but it's especially connected to the Fibonacci sequence, which we get by starting with 0, 1, or by starting 1, 1, or 1, 2, or any of these pairs would lead to the rest and to one other sequence that plays by these rules. What's known as the Luca numbers that begin two, one, and then use that rule to create the rest. Or since these add to three, if you started with one, three, you would also get the rest. Now to see the extra special connection that these have with the golden ratio and its powers, Let's go back here and add a few more approximations of the powers of the golden ratio. 
As you look at higher and higher powers of the golden ratio, a strange pattern emerges. This one is a bit under seven. That one's not much over 11. That's barely under 18, and they get closer and closer to integers. By the time you get to the 20th power, it's right under an integer, and the 21st power is right over one. And the integers that they are getting close to, seven, 11, 18, etc., are the Luca numbers. There are many ways in which these two Fibonacci esque sequences are linked to the golden ratio and other cool corners of math, and I'll make an episode at some point in the future just about these two sequences, and the golden ratio will surely show up then. But for now, I want to go back to that original question that I asked to show how we can transform it into even more cool representations and forms that the golden ratio has. That original question I had was, which x is x squared equal to x plus 1? We saw that if I divide each side of this by x, I get the other identity of x equaling 1 plus 1 over x. And something I showed in an earlier episode about continued fractions is that if we substitute this whole x for that little x in a continued fashion, I get this infinite continued fraction. But one thing I haven't shown before is that if instead of dividing by x here, we tried taking the square root of each side to turn that to an x, we would get a whole different identity. Now, we have to be careful taking the square root here because remember that there were two answers to that original question, the golden ratio and its negative reciprocal. However, we can note that one of the answers should be x when we square root that side equaling the square root of x plus 1, which we'll write as 1 plus x so that we can do that substitution thing again, where we substitute all of that for the x in a continued iterated way, giving us another awesome crazy form of the golden ratio. And both of these, as we add more ones, will get closer and closer to the golden ratio, meaning that their infinite forms, the infinite continued fraction and the infinite continued square root, both equal the golden ratio. Now there's a lot more I could say about the golden ratio. It'll show up in several future episode topics, I know for sure. Today, I just wanted to take you all on a little journey to see how a question I asked as a child ties into a whole web of questions that have probably been asked throughout history that lead back to this special number, a number that I met as a child and then forgot about for years before bumping back into. And it was like meeting an old friend and all of its relatives. And that's all for now. Thanks for joining me to learn some things about the golden ratio, and I'll see you next episode.